Here is another judge's comment that we hear over and over again. This is a pleasant image, good composition, good colour, sharp image, but it's a little bit weak around the edges. Now what does the judge mean when they say weak around the edges? What they're asking for is for us to put a little more tone around the corners and the edges of the image. Now with this image here you may notice that we may need just a little bit more down the bottom than we may at the top, but we'll see how it goes. Now the technique I'm about to demonstrate here on a digital image is more or less exactly the same technique that I was using 40 years ago in the darkroom. It was one of the first techniques I learnt and then we applied it to most of the images that we produced. So I suppose you could say that if you've got a technique which has stood the test of time there must be some good reason to apply it. Perhaps sometimes through the distortions in our lens we can sometimes have a weakness around the edge where we get a certain lightness which we don't get elsewhere but sometimes it has nothing to do with that just the pure fact that we're trying to throw emphasis onto the main subject in our picture here it's a kangaroo so if we're not careful what happens is light edges or areas around the edge of the print attract our eyes whether we're conscious of that or not I'm not entirely sure probably not we're certainly not conscious of this in the early days of our photography and it's something we have to learn but after a while we do become conscious of this now I think I can demonstrate it pretty easily with this image on screen which when we look at it it's not a bad image at all it's well exposed it's got nice color we've got a good subject now we're working here in the main screen of Photoshop but what I'm about to do is exactly the same in Photoshop elements not quite in Lightroom we're going to deal with that in a slightly different way and also camera raw but let's take it at its basic sense here by picking up our freehand lasso tool from the toolbox. What we're going to do is make a selection. The selection doesn't have to be very exact and you'll see exactly what I mean as I start to just draw the shape around the picture. And there you can see I've drawn a fairly irregular shape and I haven't taken a great deal of care in doing so. Well, I have in a way because I've left that nice sort of rough oval shape in the middle. As many of you know that once we make a selection of course, if we wanted to make a change in that selection, we're going to get a very sharp edge. And also we want the outer edge changed and not the inner edge. So let's cancel that for a moment. First thing we need to do is to inverse the selection. We can use keystrokes for that but it does amount to three of them. So maybe better off to go to select inverse. There's the reminder of the keystrokes. Shift control I. Now you can see there's a difference. We've got the outer edge selected. Got a fairly high resolution image here so we need to feather the edge of the selection and I'm going to go to the top of the screen and click and I'm going to choose a feather. Usually I like to go up to the 300s when I'm using a high res image from cameras sort of around 20 megapixels but there's no set amount here. You can give this more or less and there's no risk of course if it goes wrong you just hit the undo and have another go. I think what I'll do first is to hide that selection. This isn't an essential part of this technique, but if we hit Control H, we can toggle that selection on and off. And I've just hit the key twice. And that just gets it out of our eye line, and we can see what we're doing. So the trick here is to darken the outer edge of the image as much as we can, but without it becoming obvious. I suppose the one problem we have here is because we're actually applying the amount of shading around the outer edge of course we can see where the edge is but you've got to imagine this image opened up in front of a judge who has not seen it before so for him or her we want to get the darkening as far as we can go so it's doing its job but without becoming that obvious so let's have a go using the levels I can find my levels in the image menu adjustment levels or control L 
we'll tuck them nicely up the top there so that we can see most of the image and I'm going to use the mid-tone slider in the center here to just darken down the outer edges now you can see what I mean about how we can see what's happening but if we're unsure just tick and untick the preview but look at the difference that makes that's quite a considerable difference to the picture isn't it pushing attention into the center the important part of the image that we're creating but sometimes we have a subject where maybe we want to make a change to the selection no problem with that let's cancel that for a moment let's hit control H remember the selection is still there and control D to remove it I'm going to make another selection here but as you'll see I'm going to keep this a little bit tighter to the kangaroo but I'm going to go to the select menu and inverse it again I'm going to soften it in a moment but what I'd like to do is to remove the areas here and here because that's already going quite dark so some of the options we have for a selection tool along the top here this is add one selection to another see the little plus this one here removes a selection so what I can do I can adjust the selection I've made so what I'm going to say to myself here is well I want all of that removed so I'm going to select a spot around about there so I want that removed and I want all of that along there removed and we'll go around and along the top now you'll see that what I've done is I've made the same sort of vignette shape that I made before but now because of the nature of this image I'm biasing what we're about to do to those parts of the image which are the lighter now we can do this more than once so we can always come back and do the top less than this if we feel the top of the image needs a little bit of darkening but not as much as we gave it before but let's give this a try by going to refine edge now if you tick the little box down here remember settings then the feather you applied before will be remembered and sometimes that's useful so there I have my selection I can hit control H to hide it now let's see what we can do with that levels command now this time I will bring that levels palette on screen with control L because it's very convenient to do that and if I crank my mid-tone to the right now you can see we're getting a much better effect aren't we we're getting everything we want in our image but we're not overdoing that top edge untick the preview and you can see just how much of a improvement we've made to this image now one thing not to forget is to reveal your selection once you've hidden it many a time I've hidden a selection to carry out some work and then wondered why some of the tools in Photoshop failed to work because I was trying to do work up here and of course by having a selection on screen is going to prevent that and if it's hidden and we don't see it so anytime any tool mysteriously doesn't work and maybe you've been using the selection tool just hit control D and you'll probably find that was the cause now you can see a slight warmth coming through with the low sun over on the right hand side but if we wanted to just kill the saturation in these areas that's not difficult to do either and we're going to come back a little bit later on I think and look at doing something like that now I've just opened up the original image you may have seen that instant change on screen because I think this may be worth us skipping from one to the other just to look at the difference we've made so what we've done now is to hold in the edges of the frame so we're forcing the viewers attention up into the face of the kangaroo particularly as we've got some white or light areas here which is going to attract our attention we certainly don't have any white areas around the outer edge which is going to draw our eye away from the main subject but let's take a look at this in camera raw where it first started life there's the image just as I opened it a few moments ago or just prior to opening it a few moments ago so we can still see now the weakness in the image 
Well, we do have the opportunity to do much the same thing as we've just done with the previous image in Camera Raw. And we've got a couple of tools we can turn to to do this. Let me turn first of all to this one, the radial filter. We just go to the center of the screen for a minute, just click and drag. Doesn't matter where we drag, and you can see we have a circular or oval shape. We can decide on the shape we want. We can go outside the bounding box and we can rotate it. So in this instance we could bias our oval shape over the kangaroo and as you can see I can drag it out and cover more or less the same area that we covered before. Remember this time we're working on a raw file but what we've got here is the exactly the same thing as we saw in our selection a few moments ago. If you come over to the right hand side we have a feather command. I'm going to start off with that at 50% and we can hide the overlay by either unticking this little box here but a much more convenient way is using the V key on the keyboard. A bit like doing Control H in the main body of Photoshop. So just for the moment I'm going to touch that V key and we'll start from this position. First thing I'm going to look at is the sliders here because sometimes the sliders reflect what we've been given a previous image or previous manipulations of this image. So I'm just going to double click the saturation and reset it and double click the exposure and reset it because that is the basic image as we opened it into Photoshop a few moments ago. But now these controls don't relate to the entire image. They just relate to what's inside or outside of our circular filter. And we can even determine that by going down here. There we've got the outside selected. We could actually change the inside too. So let's hit that V key again and see what we can do. So let's go to the exposure and I can just drop the exposure down. And there we can do exactly the same as we did in the main window of Photoshop a few moments ago. Once again though, it is darkening maybe the top a little too dark. It may not be. You may be quite happy with that going a little bit darker at the top because it's not bad at all. But let's just assume for the sake of argument that you do and you want to just lighten that a little bit. Remember what we're about to do is not a problem, we're working on a raw file. I can pick up my graduated filter. I can just drag down the graduated filter. This time I'm just going to increase the exposure a little bit, so I'm just going to temper the darkness I put in the top. Not much, but just a little bit. Something like that. But we also have the added advantage here of being able to do a bit more at the bottom. So even using the circular filter doesn't stop us from using another graduated filter at the bottom if we wanted to just make that slightly darker or slightly warmer in tone. The upshot is when we click OK to open up this file, we've got a nice balanced image. Now in many cases you'll find that the radial filter will work perfectly on its own and that original selection that I made earlier on which was very quick and dirty something like that will also work just as we've created it here. But I picked an image here which had a little bit of a problem in that we needed to bias the change from the top to the sides and the bottom because that's what happens in the real world. Let's take a look at this image in Lightroom. Now we have exactly the same options that we had in Adobe Camera Raw because the develop module of Lightroom is very much the same. So I won't take too long to do this because it's a duplicate of what we did a few moments ago. But there's the filter we're looking for. Let's click to select the radial filter. Let's go straight to the kangaroo and click and drag to draw our shape. Come outside to rotate it. Ignore what's going on in the outer edge here. You often find weird and wonderful things. As you can see I can move it around to get the position I want. But for reasons I'm not entirely sure the saturation has jumped to maximum so I'll double click to reset it. So there you can see the effect of the circular filter or the radial filter.
So now all I need to do is to bring down that exposure exactly the same as we did in Photoshop, going as far as I dare but without the edges of my selection showing and if I need to I can always go and tweak the feather up a little bit and as you as you can see you do have quite a bit of scope here and I've gone down quite a bit I'll go down a little more something like that now that looks pretty good but that has taken down that top part a little bit too dark but of course we've got the same options here as we had in Camera Raw let's select the graduated filter and I'll just click and drag to drop that down at the top there and we'll just lighten the exposure there to lift it a little bit take away some of that really warm color we don't want that competing with the image and there we have our image doing exactly the same thing as we did before and of course we've still got the opportunity like we did in Photoshop to even darken the bottom a little bit and we also added a bit of warmth there it's all balancing the image and keeping the emphasis in the center. Here's another image which I've done very little to. I'm just going to pick up my white balance tool and click into the ground there because I think that's going to make a nicer set of colors. Maybe I'm just going to drop the exposure a little bit and maybe a little bit of clarity, maybe a tiny little bit of vibrance but now let me select that radial filter once again and again we'll pull it out and start to maneuver it around so that we get it over the the bulk of the aircraft let me push that feather up a little bit and bring the exposure down now the more we increase the feather of course the softer the edge and if we come right down of course we get quite a sharp edge so we do get the opportunity to be able to adjust the feather and the size and shape of the selection and you can see the effect is changing as I move this but when I'm happy there we have a nice image remember last time we added a graduated filter as well well perhaps that's another opportunity here right at that top left or top right what am I saying left for saturations up again let's get rid of that but let me just take down the exposure on that top right fairly quick and easy to make a major improvement to many images and all different subject matters too Even in a picture like this, which is in fact an infrared shot, taken with a camera converted to shoot infrared, but of course we don't have a typical blue sky with white fluffy clouds here, but you can see the circular filter I've applied, I'll hit the V key to get rid of it, I've got a feather approaching 60%, and I'm going to take the exposure down, and you can see how I can give a lot more impact to the cottage in the center because that hardly changes at all but we do darken down all around the edges I would argue that we probably need a little bit more at the top of the screen so once again this is another one of those cases where we may want to add to our circular filter with a little bit of graduated filter at all and the amount I've given it looks pretty good to me so I would just need to open up the image Now here's the image before the circular filter and the graduated filter was applied so no shading around the edge. Now let's take a look at what we've achieved and remember we've done this in just a few seconds while demonstrating. We could take a bit more time and probably get this even better but nevertheless I think when we select the shaded version we can see a tremendous difference to the impact and the wow value of the picture and it's so simple and quick to do.